Or does that come from and how does that work? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I, I, how does, that's part of the, the $4 million figure. But right. Does that go back to the general fund? or what? No. We will use that to make, uh, operate and do maintenance with as we move ourselves off the general fund and we look for revenues increasing. Remember, our visitorship this year is up 16%. That's going to start spilling in, and, and we'll start balancing that as we close that gap. Those cash balances are used as a buffer for maintenance and operation and for emergency situations. So that's money that comes into the Parks and Rec Department through the people who use the parks? That's Five correct. Days. Fees. Thanks. Director, how much do you anticipate fees increasing, and at what point do you reach a problem? Where that's a very good question, because it's really important to us that we don't outprice our families. Our single people or our families that uh, they want to go to our great outdoors and be able to be in our parks. Let me explain it to you this way. As we look at our fee increases, we are looking to what other states around us are doing and what is equitable. We also look to what our, our people in the state of Idaho can afford. And uh, as I was thinking about this the other night, I went to the movie, took my two grandchildren, and I thought for the price of four people to go to a movie, two adults and two children, not even teenagers, and one box of popcorn with two medium drinks costs forty nine dollars and fifty cents it costs you five dollars with our one dollar fee increase to go for a whole day in the park to be outside in a classroom that you can enjoy for a whole day with that forty nine dollars and fifty cents you can spend two nights camping in, a, in one of our state parks there is nothing that you can do today even with our fee increases that is more healthy and more outdoors than being in, in a great state park do we anticipate about a dollar? In most cases, about a dollar. Now, one of the other things that we have had some pretty good numbers on is uh, one of our more higher performing <coughs> parks, Ponderosa. Ponderosa. Uh, and we found in that environment, we were, we're, we're able to actually make money at that park. We not only cash flow, uh, we actually make, if you will, a profit at that park. And <clears throat> it's probably one of the higher priced parks uh, to go to in the state. So uh, Nancy and her folks, I think, have done a good job of localizing. Uh, so when we say we're going to go up a dollar or two dollars, that may not be all over the state. They, they're they going to localize that. But once again, the, the effort is to how close can we get to self-sufficiency? How close can, uh, can we get to minimizing the impact uh, that uh, the parks have on the general fund? Governor, you, you mentioned that at the time the proposal was to move part of it to fish and game, um, some of the <coughs> registration fees and things like that. Is, still, is that still part of the plan, the vendor system for fish and well, game? Well, it, it, may, it may go just the other way around. Uh, because, uh, I mean, or it could. Uh, what we're looking to do is have a one-stop shop. So if uh, you want to get your snowmobile license, your off-road vehicle license, uh, you want to buy your fishing license, uh, uh, all the licenses uh, or permits uh, that are normally required for uh, uh, participating in those facilities uh, or participating in the fish and game opportunities in Idaho. Uh, right now, you've got to go to several different places in order to get those same things. Uh, we do have, we are looking at conceptually uh, how, how can we have a one-stop shop so that somebody that wants to come to Idaho and uh, do some off-road uh, vehicle, but also wants to fish at the same time, uh, or is in Idaho, and also needs to license the uh, the vehicle or the trailer uh, that they all they're all in their off-road vehicle on. Uh, you know, how, how close can we get that down to uh, a one-stop shop? Governor, I know each state agency is different in its own personality. Is this model that we're talking about? Is it a template that could be used for other agencies? I think specifically public television. If not the template, at least the process that Nancy went through. Uh, one of the things that I asked, I had asked uh, some time before, was that I, I wanted a business plan for every park. I wanted to know what every park was making and every park was losing uh, to have that kind of uh, impact uh, that we were having on the general fund. And uh, I really uh, haven't gotten to that, but uh, Nancy is in the process of getting that in what she has done thus far uh, is a good business model. That's why it's important to have people who've been in business uh, in this process. Uh, <clears throat> but I think the process could be, if not the model itself, the process could be 
a model, a, a tutorial uh, for every agency to go through. Uh, we're, we're discovering more and more things uh, in our business model uh, in going through the zero-based budgeting that we've gone through with, with selected agencies thus far that uh, they, they've been operating without a business model, without an operations model. And uh, in order to, in order to uh, really get a hold uh, on where we're going and are we meeting our mission, I think it's important that every entity that we possibly can has a business model. 